Ahoy Bekis! Welcome aboard another Cambridge Admissions video. In today's video, I'll dive deeper into my course, the test that I had to take for it, as well as what I did for preparing for the test and some additional tips that I have for anyone who's taking the test this year. If you'd like to see more Cambridge-related videos, please hit the subscribe button down below. Now, without any further ado, let's get sailing. <laughs> The course that I applied for and got into was called the Natural Sciences course at Cambridge, or NATSKI for short. It's best explained by this overview I got on the Cambridge website. NST is the framework within which most science subjects are taught at Cambridge. The course offers the biological and physical sciences listed below and the option to specialize or to study a range of subjects. Basically, this course has incredible flexibility, which is what I loved most about the course while I was researching which course I wanted to apply for. Though you can mix and match all of the courses that they offer, the application form does ask you to indicate which stream you are more likely to study. So the options are physical or biological sciences, and I chose the biological stream on my application form. Now, apart from the UCAS, I had two other required components for my application, a test as well as a live interview. The test for Natsuki applicants is called the Natural Sciences Admissions Assessment, or ENSA for short. On most resources online, ENSA is referred to as a pre-interview written assessment. But since I was an overseas applicant who wanted her interview to be in Singapore, I actually took my ENSA as a post-interview test. In my previous video, I spoke about how the deadlines and timelines for international applicants vary slightly from local applicants. So for applicants sitting an overseas interview, the interview tends to take place earlier than that of the local applicants. Now to give you a clearer idea of the timeline, I had my interview on the 14th of October in person. The ENSA date is fixed, so I wrote my ENSA around November along with all other applicants worldwide. And then the rest of the local applicants gave their interviews in December on campus at Cambridge. Now going into further details about the ENSA. I was lucky that my school um, registered me as well as was the test center for me to take the ENSA. You need to be a registered test taker by the 15th of October. So do ensure that you find out all the details of how you can register for the test, where you can take it in your country. Because if I remember correctly, the university doesn't really notify you to remember to take the test on time. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you are a Natsuki applicant who um, applied to either Magdalen College or Trinity, or you did an open application and were allotted to either Magdalen or Trinity, you will need to take an extra test apart from the standard ENSA. So do check out the details that are available on the Cambridge website. Now coming to the structure of the ENSA, I was actually really surprised to see that they've changed the format of the ENSA quite significantly from last year, which was when I took it. So the ENSA is split into two sections, section one and section two. In the previous years, section one was of 80 minutes and was a completely MCQ based um, section. So section one of the previous ENSA had five parts, A, B, C, D, and E. Part A was mathematics, which was compulsory for applicants to answer that part. Apart from part A, we had to pick two extra parts to answer. So I did parts C and D, which were chemistry and biology. There were 18 MCQ questions per part. So we had a total of 80 minutes to complete all three parts that we're doing. Now the new section A has only four parts, A, B, C, and D. Part A is still mathematics and is still compulsory. But apart from this, candidates have to do just one other part. So the new ENSA requires candidates to do mathematics plus one other science part. In the previous test, part E was advanced math and physics, and that seems to have been removed in the new test. The new test has 20 MCQs per part, and there's a total of 60 minutes for candidates to answer both the parts. For both the old ENSA as well as the new ENSA, there is no negative marking and no calculators are allowed. Now, coming to section 2, these are where there is a lot of changes this year. Now, section 2 of the old ENSA had no MCQs, so it was completely extended response questions. There were a total of 6 questions, 2 each from physics, chemistry and biology. Out of these 6, two questions needed to be answered by us. When I did my ENSA at home with the past papers, I always ended up doing both the questions from biology and I also went through the chemistry section questions just for practice. 
However, in the final test, I actually ended up doing one from chemistry and one from biology because I didn't really like or wasn't like too confident about the question, second question from biology. Calculators were allowed for the section 2 of the old answer. Now, coming to the new ENSA, there seem to be no ERQ questions. So it's MCQs, but again. There are three parts in the section 2 of the new ENSA, one each from physics, chemistry, and biology. The candidates need to pick just one part, and each part has 20 MCQ questions. In the new section 2, no calculators are allowed, and the total time allocated is 60 minutes. All in all, section 1 seems to be pretty similar except shorter in both length as well as duration, but section 2 seems to be completely different. The reason it's useful to be aware of these changes um, in the format of the answer is so that you have a clearer idea of what still is and isn't in the new answer while you're using the previous year's past papers for practice. Now, very conveniently, all the information about the ENSA is available on one long page on the Cambridge website. I'll attach a link down below to that website so you can go and revise the information if you want further clarifications. The information available there includes even the exact subject content that's going to be tested in the ENSA. I did the IB diploma program and I did not do any extra revision or learning for the ENSA because I found that most of the subject content was already covered in my IB Bio and Chemistry courses. The guide available on the website also clearly states the format, scoring, and the content of the ENSA. There are also past papers available on the same website from the year 2016 if I'm not wrong, along with the answer keys as well as the detailed explanation for every question. Since the ENSA has been updated for applicants applying from the year 2020, Cambridge has released a set of specimen papers following the new format of the ENSA. So do also check that out if you are taking the test this year or later. Of course, keeping the format and time allocation apart, I guess you could still use the old um, past papers to kind of get an idea of the type of questions asked. Now, coming to my personal experience and the tips that I have that can also be applied to the current ENSA format. Before I took my ENSA, I looked through all the past papers available on the websites. Most of them I did do under timed conditions. But more importantly, I read through all the explanations for all the questions that I was doubtful or stuck on. Obviously, I guess that mattered more to us because we had the extended response questions as part of section 2. So we needed to keep in mind um, using the relevant key terms that were expected from us. In my opinion, all in all, the MCQs as well as the ERQs that we had, the questions themselves weren't super, super hard. They ranged from easy to challenging, but they all were definitely doable. The catch, though, was the time limit. It's insane. I don't think I completed my final test paper, leave alone time to check it. So try and move on as fast as you can um, through the test and get to the last question before you come back and check the questions that you're probably stuck on. Another thing that was so annoyingly challenging was that each MCQ had seven options per question. So this obviously made it quite impossible to use any process of elimination to reach the answer for the MCQs. Now the new test format seems to have five options for section one, but the usual Cambridge seven options for section two. So on one hand, there was this insane time crunch. And on the other hand, there were like these million options for each of the MCQ questions. So all in all, this ENSA test did seem to kind of test how we can concentrate under stressful conditions. So keep this in mind during prep as well as your final exam. Try and work more on speed and concentration. The ENSA test is quite mentally exhausting. And there were times that I wanted to just close my eyes and cry during the exam. My test overall went okay. It didn't go bad, but it didn't go great either. In fact, I remember walking out of my examination room quite confident that I did not make it in. So yeah, I ended up receiving an offer despite my test not going superbly well. So this is a testament to the fact that admissions tutors take into account multiple factors while making their decision. So that was the breakdown of the ENSA test as well as my personal experience and tips for taking it. Comment below down or DM me if you have any other questions regarding the NSA test. Of course, the third component of my application was my interview, which was quite an interesting experience. Drop a like below if you'd like um, for me to dedicate a whole other video about my interview, as well as the questions I was asked and how I answered them. Good luck for all of you taking your NSA this year and stay tuned for more videos. Please do share these videos to whomever you think might benefit from them. Bye!